Hi everybody, my name is Ryan Wells and today I'm going to talk about my paper which looks at the Latinx student experience in advanced placement courses. I'm extremely interested both in the qualitative and quantitative piece of these research questions, but obviously for today's purposes I'll be talking about the numbers and the quantitative piece and the data that can help me understand the advanced placement experience for um, Latinx students. Um, just to familiarize us a little bit with the research, a few questions here for you all. Did you know, um, did you know students who took AP exams were more likely to graduate from college within four years? Uh, did you know students who took AP exams were, were more likely to perform well in subsequent courses within the discipline? Uh, did you know that um, students who took an AP exam um, end up taking more, not less, coursework in that discipline in the future. AP also provides lots of opportunities for underserved students um, to succeed. Uh, did you know students who took an AP exam are more likely to major in their subject area or a related discipline? And uh, do you know that students who have taken one AP course are 28% more likely to graduate from college within five years or less compared to students not participating in AP. I think all of that speaks to the quantitative data that exists around AP and the importance to reach out to students from um, minoritized backgrounds and historically mar marginalized demographics. So um, some of the lit review revolves around three key questions. Um, one, the history of an inequities and lack of access and unethical tracking that exists, particularly with Latinx students that oftentimes lose or don't have access to advanced placement or honors or upper division courses. Um, following that, when schools find a way to increase the equity at schools, um, Latinx students have been shown to, to succeed and do well in those courses. And lastly, um, when a school is made aware of the statistics and are able to adapt appropriately, um, providing training and extra tutorials for test takers, the Latinx pass rates of students increase. So um, it's a strong case for why this topic is important. Um, my research design is fairly simple. Um, it's a group comparison between Latinx students and white students because um, I want to look at why there are so many more white students enrolled in AP courses and understand um, why the numbers almost cut in half for Latin for cut in half for Latinx test takers. Um, and so I'm going to look at three continuous variables. Uh, dependent variables, the number of AP courses students are enrolled in, the number of end of year exam takers, and the number of exa exams um, students take as far as end, end, end results as well of those exams. So sampling will be from, I chose to focus on one specific school, the school that I teach at. Um, so uh, Taylorsville High School is where I teach. We're about 33% Latinx and about 50 something percent uh, white. And so those are the two um, comparison groups that I will be looking at. Um, the data collection will obviously follow the IRB process. And once that's been approved, um, working with the principal and the counseling center of the school, I'll be able to access the demographic data, student race, number of AP courses individual students took, as well as total number of exam takers and um, average AP exam results for each student. Um, the data analysis um, is, you, I'm gonna be using a t-test to check values um, between the uh, values of the, let's see here, Latinx and white students. Sorry, um, it's correcting me as I'm trying to edit this here because it doesn't like, okay, I'll just change that later. But um, the continuous variables, as I mentioned before, are student race, number of AP courses individual students take, number of end of year exam takers, and the average AP exam results of each student. So that'll be the data analysis that I'll do between the two comparison groups um, during the data analysis.
obviously um, using the t-test for, for, for those comparisons. Um, limitations, um, obviously with coronavirus and COVID, uh, both last year and this year, the AP um, test has been affected both with access to pay and take the test. Last year, there was all kinds of issues with technology and different things as well. So there are some limitations. Um, uh, we in our school and many schools in Granite District have been involved in, in a program called Equal Opportunity Schools. Something that I also failed to mention is I'm going to look at data over the last five years to see, okay, what are the disparities between the um, white students taking and passing AP exams and the Latinx students doing the same. Um, but we have, thanks to our partnership with Equal Opportunity Schools, of increased or uh, ha we've had a more focused effort on recruiting students of color and minoritized backgrounds into AP. So I don't think that'll be a limitation, but it will skew the data or show that we have had growth in recent years. Um, and uh, yeah. And then um, here's just a, a, a timeline of a uh, kind of developing a problem statement, theoretical framework, and a research question, and working through the different steps of the literature review. Um, by June, I'll send a request for the IRB approval, and in July, the AP test results come out, which I'll want to include for uh, uh, to get the 2020 data as well. And then from um, August through December, there'll be the data collection and analysis as far as um, finishing up the re remaining sections, doing editing and, com and completing revisions um, to then defend uh, the capstone. Um, implications, I think um, obviously this study isn't very novel, but I think it will provide us some important data um, because teachers will act on data that um, represents your school. That's my hope. So when we see that there are truly disparities between our Latinx AP enrollment and our white student AP enrollment, we'll be able to um, shake things up and disrupt the system a little bit. Um, I think um, I mentioned a, um, Equal Opportunity Schools before. I think that's a program that schools can invite to come to their schools and help create a system by which they can more actively recruit students of color and from minoritized backgrounds into AP courses. Um, and also another implication is with this data that shows the disparities clearly, uh, it makes a stronger case for professional development, whether you focus on culturally re responsive teaching or um, active recruitment strategies or um, implicit bias training, whatever you see as important, once the, the faculty can see the, the, the statistics and the quantitative data, that there are indeed disparities, um, positive change can happen. Um, just a quote here from some researcher, if district, from, from some researchers that I included in my paper, if districts seek to target groups of students who are underserved, they need to consider strategies and policies that explicitly and directly address those groups. So my hope is that this quantitative data that shows the disparities between Latinx and white students can make a strong case for innovation um, going forward so that there's more equitable practices in AP recruitment and AP supports for students. So um, I'm hoping I can do a similar project for my capstone. Not sure if I'll do quantitative or qualitative, but um, in this project, I, I think this quantitative data could be very useful in many, making a meaningful case for uh, for more equitable practices and innovation around around this topic. So, thank you for listening to my presentation. Good job, everybody. Good semester. And thank you, Dr. Nee, for your time and great class this semester.